Hi everyone, my name is Laura Wisse and I'm happy that I finally found some time to record another tutorial. So today I'll be talking on the, about the division of the hippocampus into anterior and posterior subregions. So I think there are a couple of different ways to divide the hippocampus into anterior and posterior subregions, but I'm just going to discuss one of them, the one that is most commonly used as far as I know, and that's also the one that I'm personally familiar with. So this rule uses the ANCUS and defines the border between anterior and posterior hippocampus by the disappearance of the ANCUS. And the ANCUS, to remind you, is this region in the white circle here, but also here and here. And uh, this figure comes from a paper that I wrote together with Robin de Flores and David Baron. So how do we use the ANCUS? So the last slice on which the ANCUS is visible is the last slice of the anterior hippocampus. And for this particular rule, the anterior hippocampus is synonymous with the hippocampal head. And posterior hippocampus includes both the hippocampal body and tail. Uh, so before I move on, I just want to give you uh, some references for this particular rule. And then before I show you a couple of examples, I just want to highlight this paper by Jordan Popek, who uh, discusses the uncle apex as a border between anterior and posterior and actually indicates some limitations of this rule. So that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use this rule. I think it's still probably the best uh, way out there to divide anterior and posterior hippocampus, but I also think it's it's good to be aware of the limitations of the method that you're using, so I would definitely recommend reading this paper. So now I want to give you a couple of examples, uh, show you how you can uh, do this in practice. So I want to start with this example. This is a T2 beta MRI scan. The gray matter is actually a little bit lighter than the white matter. And I'm going to give the example in the right hemisphere. Um, and the hippocampus, as you can see, I already segmented it. So the use of this rule uh, kind of assumes that you already segmented the hippocampus and then you can divide it into anterior and posterior afterwards. So the uncus is the medial portion in the anterior part of the hippocampus. So this is lateral, this is medial. So this is the uncus. So now I'm just going to follow it in a posterior direction and I'm gonna see if it's still there. And here you can see it actually separate from the rest from the hippocampus and that's actually pretty common. And then in the next slide you can see that it disappears. So this would be the slice in which the hippocampus or the uncus has disappeared. So I think I would call this the most anterior, most posterior slice of the anterior hippocampus, and this would be the first slice of the posterior hippocampus. And to just show you uh, this without the segmentation, so this is still gray matter, this is gray matter, and then here you can see it disappear, so it's very bright. So then I'm gonna show you a little trick of how to divide the two. So I'm going to go now to the 3D view. And I'm going to try and line these two up. All right, and then I'm going to use the scalpel tool and I have here label two over label one. I use the scalpel tool here. here. And I'm actually drawing a line over the other two lines. Then you can see the arrow indicating this direction, but I don't want to color over this label. I want to color over this, not color over this part, but I want to color over that part. So I do flip, accept, and then update. So you can see that now the posterior region is green. So I just want to check in the coronal slice. Sometimes it's a little bit off. The angle can be a little angle can be a little bit off. So just want to double check but you can see that it worked well so that was the first example 
And I'm gonna show you another example. Okay, so this is a um, T1 rated MRI and I'm gonna only look at the right hemisphere in this tutorial today. So again, this is lateral, this is medial. I already have the hippocampus segmented and this part here is the uncus. So I'm gonna follow it in a posterior direction so you can see that it's becoming smaller and smaller and it separates out here and then it disappears. So I think this would be my last slice of the uh, anterior hippocampus and this would be the first slice of the posterior hippocampus. So to just show you this without the labels. So this is the uncle region. That is the uncle region, it's becoming smaller. It's fairly small now and then it disappears. So I'm gonna do the same thing in the 3D panel. Again, trying to align these two lines. Gonna draw a line on top of that and then flip it, accept. And then now I see that this one is red, but this one should already be green. So I will just fix that one uh, slice. So now it's correctly uh, divided into anterior and posterior hippocampus. So I'm gonna show you another example. That was the wrong one. All right. All right, so again, right hemisphere, this is lateral, this is medial, this is the uncus. Now I'm gonna follow it in a posterior direction. Then I'm just keep my eye on the uncus moving in the posterior direction and then you see a sudden change here from this slice to this slice. So I think that's where the uncus disappears. So this one actually looks a little bit different from what we've seen before. So I just picked this example because sometimes the uncus doesn't become a separate uh, region on the coronal slice. So I think it's important to know that. So just to show you it without the label. So this is the uncus, this is the uncus and then it disappears. So you still see some white here, but that is the um, uh, fimbria that's generally very hyper intense. So I hope you see the difference between these two, sl these two slides. Um, yeah, so this is a little bit more difficult, but I think once you get used to looking at the hippocampus on this, these T1 rated images, you'll, it will be easier. So yeah, so this would be, in my opinion, the last slice of the anterior hippocampus and this would be the first slice of the posterior hippocampus. So again, we'll do the same thing. Ah, I did it incorrectly. All right, uh, well, regardless, I have now green as anterior label and red as posterior label, so. All right, um, then the last example that I have,
And of course, uh, you want to give anterior and posterior in the same label uh, in each subject that you have in your data set. I just made a mistake with the previous example, but obviously for research purposes, you would switch the two labels again. All right, so this is the last example, and I picked this one because this subject has severe atrophy, so I wanted to show you an example of a subject like this. So again, this is lateral, this is medial, this is the uncle region, and I'm gonna follow it in a, all right, the other way, in a posterior direction. This is the uncle region, I'm really focusing on that region when I'm scrolling in the posterior direction. And then it seems to be gone. I do want to point out that there is a few little voxels here. So, and I think that's another important point. Um, it can sometimes be a little bit ambiguous to pinpoint the last slice of the uncus. So I think, I personally think these are just three voxels. They're not quite the same intensity as the rest of the hippocampus. I think this is probably too little to be considered uncus. However, you could maybe argue that this is still uncus. Um, I think the important thing is to, when you're segmenting your own data set, to uh, make this decision the same for each subject. So be very consistent between subjects. Um, so, but that, yeah, I think this is, this is an, an ambiguous one. And, um, this unfortunately happens. So um, I'm just now, for now, deciding that this is the last slice with the uncus and this is the first slice of the posterior hippocampus. And I'm gonna do the labeling again. So sometimes, um, sometimes this happens in the coronal plane. So this was the last slide and this should actually be green. So I'm gonna fix this. So I think this doesn't, in the 3D plane, that doesn't always work perfectly. So be sure to check in your coronal plane and fix it. All right, so that was my last example. Um, I hope this was helpful. And uh, thank you for listening and I hope I can upload another tutorial soon.